that I convinced myself that I like plants again. And I moved, I applied to Sinesta Virapato, who is mainly work with plant biochem biochemistry and biotechnology. And I started my master's program there. But then uh, the first semester, I was taking the classes and had some, I decided I was, I was gonna work with maize, but then something happened and ended up working with nematodes and, and genomics. So my master project was pretty much um, getting a genome draft from my nematode. And well, not right now, I'm doing my PhD program at the same lab, but I'm doing the, the program is planned by technology, but I don't work with plants or do my But I, I'm gonna talk more things about it. Well, right now I'm at Langerio, which um, I, um, the program is from Simestav, but I work at the, it's kind of a different institute in the same place. The, it's the National Laboratory of Genomics for Biodiversity, and it was created uh, six years ago, seven years ago. And the goal of, the, of our institute, which it started as a department of the Simestav Irapuato, but right now it's separate and it's gonna be a different unit. So we're gonna be like a big complex. So our goal is to integrate uh, different uh, research groups and get like high quality and cutting edge research and eventually or with mixing biology, the biodiversity and eventually uh, uh, use the this sustainability element. And well we have these nice buildings over there. And we moved there in, actually I, I, when I started my master's, I was in Sibestav and then a month later that I started my, my master's project, I moved here. It wasn't that this nice. And we moved in the new facilities. We've been there almost three years, I think. And one of the big, uh, high, or the highlights that we have is that we have a big genomic services, that's all this platform. And well, they do real-time PCR, microRNAs, microRNAs, um, CDN, CDNA library, they go there. And we have a big facility for uh, sequencing. We have a center sequencing and next generation sequencing. We have four by four, we have I don't know, like five machines, and we have now Solid, the newest one. We have a, I don't have it here, but we have Iron Torrent, and we're getting a Solexa one. So we have already covered pretty much everything. And we well, we offer services and we have it there too. And well, our institute is or or lab and here is involved in some uh, big institutional project. We this was already sequenced the Palomero maize genome. They they're doing the bean genome and the volcano genome too. Well, we're working on a genome too. But some other people have different and genome projects. And well, right now when I started at the heavy there were six researchers, six research groups. Right now we have 14 different groups in the computational area. Some of them, like a big group with plant development. Some of them were with the flora and the fruits. Some of them were with the seeds, or with uh, female gametogenesis, this is a really big group. And some other people were with uh, engineering plants. I think this group, right, uh, so no, this group uh, had an award in award last week or something, MIT, for young scientists innovating in biotechnology. One of the girls is in, well, that girl is in this lab. We also have uh, Sonjo and development of expressions, and evolution of metabolic diversity, structural biology. This professor is very important, I don't know what he does. And I'm working in this lab that's called Nuclear Mi Mitochondrial Interaction and Phylogenomics, which I'm gonna talk more about. We call her, we call it the research genomic We have two main lines of research lines. Um, we're interested pretty much in mitochondrial genetics or genomics <coughs> and how it, they evolve and how the functional aspects of the genes in mitochondria. Um, we have characterized several genes using time space, using real time PCR. And we're also very interested in developing an animal model to study this uh, functional aspect of the mitochondrial genes. This is my group. And one of the highlights of our group is that we, uh, we own an ancient DNA lab, a 
that he meets one of kind in, I think in um, Mexico and South America. I think they have some in, in the States. But we have it. I don't work there. I've never been there. I want to see it. <laughs> Since my project is not ancient DNA, I don't have anything to do with it. So our research is uh, mainly focused on, well, half of the lab works on ancient DNA. The, all of our samples right now are pre-Columbian samples. There's a project about maize domestication. There's another one about human population <coughs> from a, a little part of Teotihuacan. And there's another project with megabacterial tuberculosis, comparing the genomics of all samples and new samples from the, of this bacteria. And we're also doing some bioinformatics about this treponema and reproducing the results from a lab in Europe. And the other part of the lab works on mitochondrial DNA, and we're um, looking at different mutation rates in, right now the projects are cervical cancer and hepatic cancer in rats. And we are, a uh, big part of the lab wants to do this uh, site directly to the genesis on an animal model. This is where I come from, or where I entered it in my projects. And we're trying to use this nematode as a biological model, just to be, to study all the mitochondria and the interaction. And, well, on this line, we have, while working on developing this model, we have uh, also this project that's horizontal transfer virulence factors, prochomics, mainly for virulence factors that we're trying to, to find, and the identification of, of genes implicated in early stages of pathogenic project process, because I'm gonna talk about more about this, why we choose why we chose this uh, nematode. Well, it has this more wide distribution, so we have a lot of uh, strains. And it has a very specific sub uh, symbiotic association with uh, this bacteria, Cenolatus monocotula. It's so specific that they develop a little pouch in the, before the intestine that's called vesicle. And they have two, this interaction have two stages that's sporadic, that's the nematode transport the bacteria, and also the nematode um, benefits from the nutrients of the bacteria produced. This nematode is very simple to reproduce. That's good for me. <laughs> and this is the life cycle. It's pretty simple. And well, the tricky part about this, it's, it's simple, but it has to be on an insect. The, this nematode only can reproduce inside an insect, so it parasites a uh, and well, we think we can study these relationships between all these types of parasitism and allogenesis, the endosymbiotic relationship, and we can do comparative genomics eventually when we have more of the genome. With all this, well, this is some of the limiters are available um, on a daily basis. Um, right now, well, we, our lab had the mitochondrial genome, but then we needed the whole genome. So this is where I started my master project, my master project doing the first draft of the genome. And I'm going to talk really back really quick what I did. It took me almost three years, but I made isogenic lines. I had uh, 12 generations. That was in order to get a very homologous population. Not homologous, um, homogeneous. Homogeneous, homogeneous uh, population. Then I had to get rid of the bacteria, so I got almost accent nematodes. This was just not to get the bacterial genome mm -hmm. sequence. Then I had to isolate it nuclei because there was no point to get the mitochondria of the you already have the mitochondrial genome. And then we'll work on the DNA extraction in order to get a high rate of DNA. And then we have with sequence, mainly with uh, 454. And then I assemble, assemble with a new blur that uh, software comes with 454. And I did some, I looked for repetitive elements. And we got that third, I got three runs while my master's. And so I just started just showing the different samples I did. And I finished there, because I have finished. But right now, we'll, uh, I still work on the genome project, but my PhD work is a piece of room. So right now, we are still doing a sampling because we have three shotgun runs, and then we have two paired runs. And 
two parent runs, and then we just got uh, solid runs, which we have tons and tons of information. So we are still doing assembly because also our cluster collapsed. So we've been trying to do this without a really good computer, so it's really, really slow. And we're also doing an addition <coughs> using prediction tools. I use GMAR and and we're also doing um, looking uh, uh, doing an audition looking for homolog. And mainly we use Blast, but we tried all these different databases. And right now we're using Blast to go, but it's based in Blast. And then, but then you map to Gene Ontology database and then you annotate it. So we have a lot of uh, conflicts. It's taking a long time, but we're working on it. That's, right now this is ongoing. But for my PhD project, I, well, my advisor thought that I should focus on something because my committee didn't want me to be like on a big, big project again, and they wanted me to graduate. So I, right now, I'm looking at identification and um, identification of the uh, genes that are implicated in the early stages of the pathogenic process. And why this is because, well, this is the model of the whole model. So we have we need insects and the the bacteria, and there's a lot of um, knowledge about this too, or the complex how they how they they work together, and there's also a lot of information about how all three of them interact, but there, there's not a lot of inter uh, information about how these two interact, because the nematode has to release the bacteria. That's what I think after 15 hours that's in the insect, so we don't know what happens before. For that, so there's some studies that suggest that this, well, this is not obligated or in lab. So I want to see how much each one participates, especially the nematode. So right now, this is an experimental strategy I'm following. I'm kind of going slow on the, my project because it has changed like three times since I started. But right now, I'm interested in what I'm going to do. And then we'll have to have the nematodes. I have to now doing, I'm going to do transcriptomics. So I'm now uh, started, uh, proving the RNA isolation techniques. And then we're going to have the cDNA uh, libraries and sequence and do the differential expression analysis. And then we're going to select some candidate genes. And well, this one is good by selection analysis, positive selective analysis. And then eventually, I hope I get to characterize these genes, and we're aiming to also do genetic transformation of our nematodes. But I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do it. Um, right now, our status is that we are still on RNA isolation because, well, this is the main what I want to do. Use basically use the solid um, fiber for the newest one. And eventually I wanted to do the two conditions, but while working I, I had to infect insects and then get the, the guts and then look for the metals, but it's really hard. So uh, right now I'm looking at if I can not do it like this, and if I can just uh, get guts and put it with the nematodes and get more nematodes to get the RNA. Because getting RNA from three nematodes is really hard. So <laughs> I'm still, uh, working on this part of what I, how am I going to, the conditions to put the nematodes and then get the art the RNA. And that's what I'm doing right now. And well, I'm also working.